Welcome to the Land of Cathedral on Ascension Day, one of the great festivals of the church's year. If we are in Llandaff on this very special day, we could be nowhere else but underneath Jacob Epstein's mighty majestus, Christ in majesty, risen, ascended, glorified. <laughs> For 40 days, we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb, and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today, we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers. Trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, we come together to worship. Ascension Day was the start of an exciting new stage of God's plan, which made it possible for Christ to be with us always. So let us rejoice, for Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. God does not leave us in our sin, but sent his Son so we might know forgiveness for a fresh start. When we struggle to trust the Lord, Lord, have mercy. When we doubt that God is with us, Christ, have mercy. 
when we lack joy despite all Christ has done for us. Lord, have mercy. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we hear the account of the Ascension from St. Luke's second volume, the Acts of the Apostles. And then we hear an account from his Gospel. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he'd said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Luke chapter 24 from verse 44 to the end. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. St. Luke tells us they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Separation is rarely easy and is often very painful. One of the greatest strains on people during this period of lockdown is being separated from family and friends. When family or close friends move a long way away, it can be very hard for those left behind. They often feel a sense of loss and sadness. Talking over the phone and even seeing them on video calls is no real substitute for being with people. The ascension, too, seems to be all about separation. Jesus is leaving his close friends behind to be with God in heaven. So we would expect this to be a sorrowful occasion. After all, his disciples have spent the last three years living alongside Jesus, following him everywhere, 
seeing his wonderful deeds and hearing his remarkable teaching. But now all this has come to an end. Surely they feel desolate and maybe even abandoned and rejected. The man they had left homes, jobs and family for was leaving them behind to go somewhere better. However, the disciples did not react in that way. Indeed, we are told the very opposite was true. After Christ was carried up into heaven, the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Clearly, this was no normal goodbye. Something more was going on. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that the recent dramatic events, his arrest, his death and resurrection, were part of God's preordained plan. So our reading sees him spell this out to them yet again. But he also made it plain that God's plans did not stop there. The resurrection was to be followed by the proclamation of the gospel from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. And Christ's ascension was integral to this, for Jesus needed to return to heaven to make this proclamation possible. St. Mark's account says that in heaven, Jesus sat down at the right hand of God, confirming his divine power and authority. He was now in the position to send upon his disciples what he said his father had promised, the prophesied gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit would clothe them with power from on high and transform and embolden the disciples to proclaim the good news. So, as John's Gospel puts it, it was to their advantage that Christ went away. It made it possible for his Spirit to dwell within them, enabled them enabling them to do even greater things than when Christ was physically with them no longer restricted by time and space. And the promise of the Spirit was why they could return to Jerusalem in joy rather than sorrow, full of anticipation about all that was to happen. The image of Jesus in heaven can appear to imply that he's far away and uninterested in our lives. But as the disciples' joy indicates, Far from the ascended Christ being distant and unconcerned, he continues to actively care for all of us. Indeed, the letter to the Hebrews describes Christ praying for us in heaven, and John's Gospel talks of him preparing places for us in heaven. From heaven, he sent us his Holy Spirit, the ultimate example of his never-ending love, Jesus said that having his spirit would be better than being physically with him. We may be tempted to doubt this, but the reality is that when Jesus was on earth, he was restrained by the limitations of his human body and could not be in two places at once. In order to help one person, he had to leave someone else. Now we can be assured that through his spirit, he lives within all of us, and is always with us, ready to help whenever we ask. The Holy Spirit transforms us from within, so that we, like the disciples, no longer need to be held back by our weaknesses and fears. The disciples had been too afraid to stand by Jesus when he was arrested, but they were transformed by this Spirit into leaders who were prepared to die for their faith. This same transforming spirit lives in us too, offering a fresh start and a new hope. It has been said that one of the greatest proofs of the resurrection is that amazing transformation of the disciples, the apostles, from quivering wrecks on the evening of Good Friday to confident, bold apostles and messengers Let's share then in the disciples' joy at the ascension. Christ is not gone, but is with us forever, 
wherever we are, whatever our situation. And nothing can ever separate us from his presence with us. Christ is our advocate in heaven. Let us approach God's throne of grace with boldness and offer up our prayers. For those who feel God is far away and unconcerned about them, that they may come to see how much God loves them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have drifted away from God, that they may recognize once more how much they need their heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering because of natural disasters and human tragedies, from the current pandemic, that they may know God's comforting presence close to them in their suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that our leaders may be guided by God in their decisions and have compassion for those they serve, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can offer up these prayers with confidence because we ask these things through Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord, Amen. Nothing then can separate us from the love of God, which is ours in Christ Jesus. 
And so we go out into the world knowing that the Lord goes with us and will remain close to us forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.